what we have here is a Java class for a test, math utils test. And it has a method called test. And uh, I was talking about how the at test annotation tells JUnit what are the methods you have to run, All right? So what's gonna happen is now if I right click on this thing and then say run as JUnit test, All right? So Eclipse knows that this is a JUnit test and it provides me this menu and I click on it. You see this window shows up over here, the tab called JUnit, and this is the result of that test run and it says one test has failed. So this is under the test class. So it, it, this forms a tree hierarchy. The first node is the name of the class. And then the second, the child node is the method, right? So I'm gonna remove this over here. And let's say I just do a system dot out Say that this test ran, right? Now I'm going to right click run. And now in the console, you see that message getting printed. And then uh, here on the left hand side, you see a green bar, which indicates that this test ran successfully. Okay, before we go there, I want to briefly touch upon the, the dependencies that we talked about. There are three dependencies that we added to, uh, that we can technically add to the pom.xml. The first is JUnit Jupyter API. This is the API for writing the JUnit Jupyter tests. The Jupyter engine, which is the implementation of the test engine, which is what runs the runs your tests. And then optionally, if you have um, the previous versions of JUnit, like if you have tests written in JUnit 4, you can use JUnit Vintage Engine and have JUnit run those. So exercise create a uh, JNet Jupyter test and run it. Uh, we just did that, right? So we created a test using Eclipse and then we ran it by right clicking and again using Eclipse. So that was where the Eclipse thing, you know, in the diagram, the Eclipse points directly to the platform, right? It talks to the platform directly and has the platform do things.